me. I'm Ron Funches, and we're all working on getting better. Hi, guys. It's me. Welcome to the podcast. It's Martin Luther King Day. I hope that means something to you. <laughs> or maybe you just think you're living a life not affected by the works of Martin Luther King Jr. You're not. You're not. He's a great man. Did a lot of great things. You know, he fought for bringing our society closer together so that we could be judged by the content of our, our character, not the color of our skin. And everybody should be with that. People are bound with that. But people forget about all the other. They always know about that speech, but they don't know his other speeches. We talked about the sacrifice that it takes to do these type of things and how how he fought against uh, the FBI and the government and how much the FBI hated Martin Luther King Jr. And now they celebrate him on Twitter because you know how people are. <laughs> but don't get it mistaken. He wasn't a man that just complete nonviolence and just doing everything. He was a man about doing whatever it takes to make sure that everybody's lives were better. And, and I appreciate that. And, and I know I couldn't have the life that I live if it wasn't for Martin Luther King Jr. and the barriers that he struck down for people like me so I can be myself. I don't have to live a certain way. I don't have to be a certain way just because I am black. And I don't have to live a a certain type of lifestyle i can do whatever i want and i'm very appreciative of that and i think right now especially when we're um talking more and more about building walls up and separating ourselves from each other we gotta remember that it, that's probably not the type of uh world that martin luther king was striving for and what type of person do you want to be you know you want to be the type of person that separates every thing from each other and just tries to live your life only around the type of people that you are or do you want to be a type of person that's open to things and new ideas and new experiences and new people and the growth that those things can cause? I want to be an open person personally. So I hope you do, too. Um, don't have much to talk about today. Really just been working a lot. Oh, today, as of today, if you want to watch Giggle Fit, my first hour comedy special, you can watch it on ComedyCentral.com and you can watch it on the Comedy Central app for free with no cable login. It'll be like that until March. Um, so if you just want to see it and you don't got any money and you don't mind commercials popping up whenever, go to the cc.com, look in their stand-up specials, go to the Comedy Central app, download that on your phone, look under their stand-up specials, it'll be right there, no cable login needed. Uh, if you're the type of person that truly fucks with me and truly fucks with this podcast, because you know we are, uh, we have no type of advertisement or any type of that budget, give me a, do me a favor and go purchase GiggleFit on itunes google play amazon prime video it's on voodoo if you have that if you are a person that's into the dark arts uh it's on the playstation network it's on the microsoft store and they're all all of these five bucks or under some places 3.99 some places 4.99 completely uncensored ad free it's the best work i ever done um i got an email from a friend of mine i guess we'll name drop on here this is my podcast john mulaney sent me an email um that was really really important to me made me really happy if you know if you know me at all you might know that john was a, a mentor of mine he was one of the first people to take me out on the road nationally um take me out to new york and other places where he could have gotten anybody you know and he chose to bring me out and help me along and he got he sent me an email basically saying that he watched the special and he said he called it uh he, he called it a perfect hour which is what i want and that doesn't mean it's perfect people can think confused like it's like oh it's perfect it doesn't mean it's perfect it means for what i was trying to put out and what i was trying to submit i nailed it and that's what he he felt and that's what he said he said i was truly myself in the hour and, and it really showcased what i was about and and getting that email from him uh, man, i said i'm not only am i talking to you about it i like, screenshotted it saved it on my phone because it's the things like that from when i get other people who either don't know me or don't 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 just don't like what i'm doing and they're like oh because i got other reviews where people are like oh you just talk about tv shows you like like it's lazy and i'm like dude if you knew me if you knew the things that i do in any given day the last word you would use to describe me is lazy so go fuck yourself and john mulaney said it was perfect so <laughs> 
and that was a big deal to me i liked it i liked it um the last couple weeks i hope you enjoyed the last last couple episodes that we recorded ahead of time because i was out in san francisco shooting a movie with with charlene Yi and michael pena um and and Ale- alexandra ship and and adam divine and it was really really fun i had a great time it was one of my biggest roles i was fifth fifth lead in that which makes it my second biggest role if you if you're following alone and playing the game at home you know that my biggest role was in this indie movie where i was third lead uh, but this was a very very big part for me especially in the studio film uh, with some with a real budget behind it and and the best part about it is i feel like i did a really good job like i went in and i wasn't as nervous I, it's like everything we do prepares ourselves for the next thing you know i did that indie movie odds are it might never even get distributed people might never even see it but i knew that it would give me the experience that helped me with with future roles and it really did it it made me so i knew how to prepare for this role i knew um i knew i didn't need to prepare the whole script at once which was things i was used to doing is my my whole everything i was doing was being done in one day or two days and i knew that i could take my time and just focus on one scene at a time and and do a lot of ad lib and improvising and i came into the table read ready and, and the guys who who were directing it and wrote it um they were just so open to to me just improvising and doing things my way and finding my voice in it and i gotta give really really big props to adam divine because like i've known this guy for a little bit and i love i, I love workaholics and i like to stand up a lot um and i hung out with him i always thought he was pretty cool but watching him work on this movie and be very nice to people and and no ego and just really trying to be helpful and doing a great job with his acting um he's the guy i want to get on the podcast for sure and he's a guy that i think is living that getting better lifestyle he's just a cool guy works with his friends um was a really sweet gentleman and and i was already a, a fan of his but i'm an even bigger fan now because i think that dude is special and doing some unique work out there and anything else i want to talk about ah, i can't exercise that sucks a dick which is not a thing i would ever thought i'd say but we're at the end of hopefully if you guys know i had a surgery at on december 19th we're in a four weeks of that now so hopefully hopefully tomorrow i will be cleared to start working out again because i miss it i need it um it's so weird to say that in my life now from a guy who used to never exercise at all to now it's like something i'm sorely missing and something that i i just want to pump some iron and, and work out give me a reason to eat a cookie because i want a cookie like a motherfucker robot is really putting the kibosh on the cookies while i'm not working out because she, she's saying i'm not doing nothing to deserve them and she's right and i think that's important to have people in your life like that who won't just give you a cookie to shut you up she'll just ask me like do you really want that cookie or are you just gonna eat that cookie while you watching something else on television and not even really savoring the cookie and then you're gonna look down and want another cookie because you only you were only consciously eating the cookie half the time and i'm like it's probably the latter it's probably that part it's probably <laughs> <laughs> but i still want the cookie though it's martin luther king day can i get a martin luther cookie a black that's a black and white cookie if you don't <laughs> Uh, that's another fun part is having robot here and it's her first uh you know my mom's here and, and we're both black and, and robot is not black so it's fun i spent the last weekend trying to convince her that we'd bake a traditional martin luther king day pie every year and that it was <laughs> that it was her turn to do it <laughs> and i got a text from my mom going did you trick robot into baking a pie <laughs> i was this close to getting that pie uh and i want instead i'm just eating them smart sweets if you guys i'm, I'm loving all the little clips i've been giving getting um people sending me instagram pictures of them watching giggle fit while eating a bag of smart sweets that makes me feel cool if you want to do that i hope the episode with jorgen was very helpful for some people learning to to keep those resolutions going and learning how to start their diet and start their getting better lifestyle um 
I'm just really happy right now. I'm feeling focused. I feel like it's the beginning of the year, but uh, like I'm just now coming out of vacation mode and, and I'm excited to get back to work writing and, and working on my stand up again. And hopefully more opportunities, movies will come up. But I just feel really focused and happy. I'm loving how many people seem to be getting used from the podcast. And I'm, I'm going to try to keep focus on that. I know this is probably not one of my best intros. Because <laughs> I don't really have a focus on it right now. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on it. And, I'm gonna, and make sure that you guys are always getting something out of this. So it's not some just vanity project of me talking about how my week went. Um, I, I do have some other things to talk about. But I'm trying to save it because we're gonna do another episode. Um, I want to keep th- keep those for that intro because I think they will they um, they'll live better there. But I'm I'm really happy with the, today's episode. Is one of my favorite people in all of entertainment. Uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. You might know her from Community. You might know her from from the Sweet Life uh, or Drake and Josh. I don't know if those are two different things. I think they are two different things. She's from Drake and Josh, um, and you. But you just might know her from being all over television all the time, and, and just getting bigger and better at it, and more movies, and just one of the sweetest people I know, one of the most genuine people I know. Um, I know a lot of people, and it's so funny because I get it too. I from when I got a review of my comedy special, where the guy wasn't even reviewing my special, he was reviewing me as a human being, and he was like, "I think this guy's phony. I think this guy." um his his positivity is fake and he he's just i although i have never met him (laughs) and it's just like fuck you dude you don't know me dog anyone who knows me know i'm as genuine as it comes i'm a fucking weirdo sorry but this is who i am and i'm not going to change and this is what i want to talk about i want to talk about positivity i want to talk about crystals i want to talk about just being a good person and if you have an issue with it or you think that makes me fake fuck you i'm gonna just keep doing what i do because it's what's making me money and so i like it and it's what makes me happy more than money it's what makes me happy and i spend too much of my time hiding this part of me hiding who i was because of people like you because of people like you from when i was me would be like oh oh that's not how black people act i remember one time i was on a fucking elevator with this lady and she just was like how's your day and i go oh my day's wonderful how's yours she goes niggas don't say wonderful and it's just like why why not because we're not supposed to have wonderful lives that's not what martin luther king would want i think martin luther king wants all niggas to say wonderful (laughs) it's a big deal don't put me in no box i'm not gonna live in there i don't care and i'm gonna be me in some ways and 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 some ways i am very traditional i like football i like hanging out with my homies i like smoking weed but also i like art i like poetry and i like anime and none of those things are weird i like wrestling and i'm gonna just be me be my sweet little weird self and if you're not digging it fine and if you want to call me phony fine and maybe i need to learn not to get on twitter and then harass that person so that they get a lot more attention than they would have gotten if i had just left it alone but sometimes i just need to get up in your ass especially if you're talking about me as a person or my son that's where i could draw a line because he called my son weird and he said that i wasn't a real person and where i come from that gets you beat up that don't that's not a, that's not a review of a comedy special that's not talking about my art that's not talking about my business that's talking about me as a human being and me as a father and that is crossing a line so i want to tell that person even though i'm sure they'll never see this but maybe you know this because i won't say their name if i see you in person you better come at me correctly with an apology because i have bail money (laughs) (laughs) and odds are i'm not gonna do nothing because my life's too good i ain't gonna i ain't gonna fucking jeopardize it over some fucking troll but don't think i won't because i'll do it sometimes just to make you should know that i'm a real human being i'm not no punk and I also am a punk. Because <laughs> I'm complicated. 
<laughs> and a lot of people were like why you even let this get to you why you let that type of stuff bother you obviously they're just loser and it's just like you know you just don't like people um telling you who you are and who you aren't i think as any human being they don't like that but you gotta get used to it and that's the position i put myself into as being a public performer putting my life out into the world putting my son out there into the world i'm lucky people haven't said worse stuff about him and i'm lucky i haven't killed those people but <laughs> uh, but it's just all about getting better become a better person and that's what i want to do and and i'm trying to focus on that in 2019 again remember if you did your vision boards and you listen to the vision board episode uh my focus this year is staying committed try to stay committed with my relationship with my diet with my art and um right now i feel it's a struggle especially with the diet not being able to work out but i have people in my corner like robot who's really pushing me to, to stay healthy and and I'm, I'm working on my art all the time even though that um, we're still working on the show and that right now it's kind of a little bit of a standstill and that's frustrating when you when you've turned in all your work and they're like mm, we're not quite sure yet but not no but not yes but we don't know how exactly what we want to change it's very frustrating and you got to have a lot of a lot of faith in yourself uh, a lot of faith in the universe and the faith in the people around you and i'm just like okay well while you guys figure that out i'm just gonna work on my stand-up i'm gonna go get some acting roles doing movies and so make myself a bigger bigger deal so hopefully even if you guys turn me down somebody else will want me and and, and just continue to put my message out there and then if you don't know what that message is it's just positivity being sweet being nice looking at the bright side of things but not denying that there's negative shit going on and taking care of that shit when it pops up you know a lot of times people think being positive is just ignoring the bad parts of your life you can't do that you gotta look them dead in the eyes know they're there and you gotta confront them gotta do confrontations you can't be afraid of confrontations and and, and you you find that the, the the longer you take to deal with something, the more it builds up in your head. And that's one of my biggest mantras is nothing is, is ever big. Nothing has ever been as big of a deal as I've made it out to be in my head. And, and I live by that and I try to focus on that. So when I get scared of something or I don't want to address something, I go, hey, odds are it's not as big of a deal as I'm making it out to be. And it usually isn't. So i hope you guys enjoy this episode we talk about a lot of a lot of fun stuff we get into a little bit of controversial stuff but i think it's all handled with grace and love and if you have an issue with it email the pod getting better pod at gmail.com i'll write me i'll write you back uh you know but don't be negative or hateful <laughs> subscribe on the youtube if you can give us a five star rating on the on the itunes and get your t-shirts get your getting better t-shirts get your ron funches giggle fit t-shirts we got a murder cake shirt coming out for those of you who love that part of the giggle fit a special um they're all gonna be on pro wrestling tees.com under the ron funches store or you can go to ronfunches.com go to my merch section and that'll send you right over on over uh we are, again great guests one of my favorite people in all the planets one of my favorite conversations that we've ever had on this podcast i hope you guys enjoy the people mowing my yard <laughs> enjoy this episode see you soon being early and being on time is one of the things that i have in my notes about you, you that do? i really like about you is that you're very you're um one of the most professional actors that i know that's very kind. that Thank you have you. a lot of respect a lot of people who um enjoy your not just your work but working with you mm -hmm. and i want to know um to me that seems easy to do i think mm -hmm. that we share that in common that we yeah. both like to be on time we both yes. like to be nice on set yes. we but as we both know it's not necessarily the rule no um why do you think that is and where does that come from do you think that comes from the fact that you you come from a midwest background or or, or where is this instilled in you? i think it comes from the fact that um well single single parent home for me my mother and being a black person in america my mom made it very clear to me and my brother that we had to be the best to get a crumb you know, and that may not be exactly true. Like you can probably get a whole sandwich if you're the best, but she told us a crumb so that we would keep striving and keep striving. I also uh, am very grateful that I get to be in this industry and I don't take it for granted. 
I'm almost 20 years in now and every day it's like, wow, I get to do this. Like I get to do Ron's podcast. Like every day is that level of joy and excitement. And um, because I don't take it for granted, I want to show up for people and I don't want people to, I don't ever want someone to be somewhere where I'm supposed to be going like this. Well, where, well, didn't she, did y'all call it? Like, I feel like it's very disrespectful to other people's time and other people's gifts to make them wait on you as if you're magically delicious. I just don't think that's the case. Now I do come too early sometimes, which I think is also rude because then I'm making people have to get their stuff together early, but I'm gonna find that happy medium at some <laughs> point and get like, you know, was it seven minutes? I don't know what, the t- what it is, well, but yeah. to be early than be late. I agree, sure. I agree. And that's something I, I took in as soon as I started getting any roles was mm-hmm. that like, to me, I was like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. Ah, let's talk about that. Yeah, so same the here. least I can do is be early. It'd be early. Listen, <laughs> as I figure it out, at least they ain't looking for me. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. I agree. That's probably some of that too. So yeah. how'd you get, because I was looking you up a bit and I know you're from Ohio. I am. Cleveland. And, from Cleveland. And, but from what I looked up, it said that you, you didn't get into acting until after you moved to LA. Is that true or is that a misinformation? It's kind of true. I, um, I did like a couple of plays in high school and, I took one experiencing theater class as an elective in college, but I never performed beyond the two like plays I did in high school. Um, I was more into music. Music is my first love. It still is my first love. And so yeah, I saw you were in a Bell Biv DeVoe. I was. I was in the East Coast family back in the early 90s. I don't know how, because I wasn't even born yet. Um, <laughs> you got to laugh that hard, Ron. Um, but yeah, so I, I, music was the thing that I was like, I want to be a singer. Well, I wanted to be a singer or an elementary school teacher, but in, creatively, I wanted to be a singer. So acting, I just, it was nice and I appreciated it and loved it, but I never was like, I got to be, a, I'm a thespian. And I, it was never that. For me, mm-hmm. it's funny that it ended up being my career, though. Well, I think in some ways that that um, that is helpful because I feel like the people who are like, I want to be a thespian, or, or so there's look me and my girlfriend who we refer to as robot on yeah. this podcast. Okay. We'll talk about it a lot where she'll um, one of the first times she dated me and she got to know me a little bit. She was like, oh, she's like, I thought you were crazy, cause com- comedian, comedian crazy. crazy, but you're like actor crazy (laughs) (laughs) well get her in here what's the difference that's what i'm trying to figure out what's the difference but what i i think i'm in the middle because i do know i do i've met some people who have only act and are straight up actors and it does seem to have a bit more of a um ego based thing it's about they seem to take care of themselves a little bit more than Mm -hmm. stand-ups necessarily do they're about making sure they get their sleep and their green juices and and and, and these are lessons that i've taken and applied because i'm like oh i want yeah to To be healthy and yeah yeah. exactly and i want to be like this is what i need to perform at my best Mm -hmm. and that's what i what i've learned is because it is such a job where you're sitting around and waiting and waiting and then when it's your time to go you're supposed to yeah yeah, nail it so you need to be prepared right um um, and it seems like such a difficult job to have and also keep such a balanced mindset. Yeah. And so you see, it just comes mostly from, you think, from from being in a single parent household? I do. I think, I, I, you know, my goal and my brother's goal was never to be the thing that made everything come crashing down. So that was like, don't have no babies uh, in school. Don't don't go to jail. Like these are the things she said. Like, or, and better yet, even beyond that, she said, you can do those things, but I will not show up to help you. So if you go to jail, you're not getting bailed out. If you have a baby before you are able to take care of the baby, then you and the baby gonna be trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't believe my mother meant that. I believe if something had happened, she would have helped me with my child. But she put the fear of God in me at a young age where. I have to be responsible. We are a team, the three of us. We, she called us the Three Musketeers. It is our job to make sure that we keep this boat afloat. Everybody got to do their their portion. And part of that is showing up on time, being where you're supposed to be, and, and being grateful for the opportunities that you get. So that's kind of what she instilled in me. And how, is, is your brother older or younger? He's older. He's older. Mm-hmm. How about how much? T- uh, two and a half years. Oh, that's yeah, two and a half years. Me and my sister. Yeah. I'm two years older than my sister. Yeah. And we, single parent household as yep. well. Um, was your Chicago, brother work- right? Yeah. Yes. Is your brother work in entertainment? Or was he, he my brother could work in entertainment. I've said this before, probably not as often as I should. He is actually way more talented than me in every area. Maybe not singing. I might sing better than him, but he could act. He's funny. He's all of that. He just didn't. I think my brother, the the sacrifice that it takes to to pursue this career is what people don't talk about a lot. Like mm-hmm. it's it's like 
sleeping on floors, ramen noodles, you know, if you don't have people in the industry that you can, that you know that have made it, that can, you know, yeah, give you a couch. You you're, you're, there's some, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know anybody in this room that has one. So <laughs> it's a struggle. And I think at a certain point, um, you either are willing to do that or not. And I think my, my brother just had, he would, would like to having the lights on. <laughs> he liked eating food at, at regular intervals. And so um, he didn't pursue it, but he could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is a um, strong way and I think a very accurate way to put it. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that it, some people don't think about that is, is more than just talent. Yeah. It's more than just um, the ability to yeah. do it. It's also the, the drive to want to do it and the yeah. ability to make sacrifices. Yeah. And I tell myself now all the time that um, I was lucky that I started when I was in my 20s, mm -hmm. when I had my son, mm -hmm. because I was young enough and naive enough naive. to just to go like, well, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. Now that I'm 35 and I have my teenage son, there's no part of me that could imagine doing that now. Yeah. Going yeah. to open mics and not getting paid. And mm -hmm. so now I understand a little bit more about my mom and my my, my parents who when they were a little more apprehensive. Yeah. Nervous they, about, yeah. 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 Yeah which I didn't see at the time. But I think it does take a healthy naivete to pursue this career. Like I, I really applaud people that are, you know, in their late thirties and forties that give it a shot. And I think those that want to definitely should, but I applaud them because you kind of have to not know how hard it's going to be to really do it. Like yeah. I moved to LA when I was 23, 22 or 23. It was right after college. And, um, I just can't remember now when exactly when, but, um, everyone was terrified like you I had a place to stay for three days I had um I knew no one I just had two rolling duffel bags in a dream and all of my friends were like oh my god what are you doing and I realized that I would be them now I would have sat young Yvette down too and be like, let me tell you something little girl like but I was so naive mm -hmm. that's the best word and I just thought well you know if it doesn't work out I'll go back to Ohio and which is true but man, it was hard. Like when I look back on everything that I survived mm -hmm. out here, it's this business is not easy. This city is not easy. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Um, yeah, it's just a hard industry. And I think about how many times that I could convince myself that <laughs> it was right around the corner. You, you got to though. The way I used to, and I still do this to myself, say this to myself, I would say it takes a hundred no's to get a yes. I would always say that. So every time I would get a no, it's like 57, <laughs> 72. You know what I mean? So instead so of you it, get that 102 and you're yeah, like, come on. Yeah, but it never did though, Ron. That's the funny thing. Like I always got something before I got to 100, but it kind of kept me believing like right around the corner, something great could come. And if not, you know, you, you just got to keep tallying up these at bats and then one day you'll hit a home run. So yeah. And, and it's not with this job it's something where you're getting better and you can see right. your skill set get better whether right. or not you're you're getting the job and that's one thing i had to learn was to just be like um to, to do my value based of how i felt when i left the audition compared right. to whether i booked the job right. or not it's like how did i feel right did i feel that i did a great job because honestly the job is the the, the audition is the job getting the audition you have to like buy there's like for every one line or two that you get on a show, there's like 50 people, 100 people that tried to get that audition. So the fact that you leapfrogged over all those folks to actually get one of the slots to actually get to do your little lines in front of somebody, that's the win. The, the job is like, wow, gravy. That's the icing on the cake. The cake is the audition. And you show up for the audition as if that's the gig, because for a lot of us, for a lot of years, that's the gig. Yeah. You're, you're only doing your acting or showing what you can do in audition rooms because you, you it takes a while for you can climb over to being the one that gets to book. Yeah. And mm -hmm. because you learn um, quickly that it becomes more than just how you did in that role. It's like, how do you look? How, how do you fit how in did, with? Mm -hmm. How did they how did the writers envision the character? What are your Twitter followers Come nowadays? Yeah, that mess. Ooh, that Twitter thing. It's, it's and it's funny. They had they told us when all the social media started that it was going to be that important. I think people would have handled their social media a little differently. I don't think any of us, I remember being on a set of community when uh, Twitter happened and we all were sitting around the table like, well, should we join? I don't know. Well, what is this thing? You know, we knew, we had knew what Facebook was, but Twitter was like this new thing. And I don't think any of us were like, this is going to be a marketing tool. That's going to help me get jobs. Nobody thought that, you know what I mean? We yeah. were tweeting such idiotic, just stupid stuff. You yeah. know, this yeah. is crazy. 
That's just never fun. know. And the now, good old yeah, days. I know those were the good old days. Nobody was paying attention to anything we were saying. <laughs> and you know, and that's how you, you know, you found your voice. A lot of people found their voice because of Twitter. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I know a lot of great writers. That's mm-hmm. how they they first got known. And it takes more than that. And I think that's when some people lose the thing. They, they think they can just get a following off of Twitter and that translates into money. And it, it doesn't. Like, you need both. But it's, yeah. it's weird that you do need both. Like, if you have an actor and you have two actors for a role and they're both equally as good for the part and one of them has half a million Twitter followers and the other one has a thousand. The half a million is getting it. They're getting it. Yeah. And it's just a simple fact, you know? Yep. Um, it's just a weird thing about how this job is more than just acting. Oh, so much more. And even even the acting. I just, last couple of weeks ago, I got to host the, the red carpet for the Hollywood Foreign Press Association for the Golden Globes. And there was all this prep leading up to that. And so I'm at the Beverly Hilton preparing for the, the show the next day and I get a call about guest starring on Dear White People, show lovely show on Netflix. And it was eight, nine, 10 pages of like a lot of talking. And it started shooting Tuesday. So we did the Golden Globes on Sunday. Uh, I had my fitting for Dear White People on Monday and I was on set at the crack of dawn on Tuesday doing five pages of dialogue. Mm, like, blah, 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 blah. oh, I'm still, I'm scared in retrospect. Like I'm scared, <laughs> but, you know, for two weeks ago right now. And I remember being on set and I had, you ever had one of those brain fart moments on set where you know the lines, right? But they're not coming out your mouth mm-hmm. <laughs> and they keep having to reset and keep having mm-hmm. to reset and keep having to reset. And I had a moment where I was like apologizing to everyone and one of the actors, wonderful actors on the show took me aside and said, you realize you got this like 36 hours ago. No one's judging you that you have like, cause it, out of everything I had to do that week, most of my work was on that Tuesday. Most mm-hmm. of my big lines were on that Tuesday. And so she was like, just breathe and you know, let it go. And then I was like, right. But what people don't know is that's the business. You might get something 36 hours before you have to. And nobody's going to be, you know, patting your back and going, well, good for you. No, we're looking at the clock like we got to reset 12 times for you. Get it together. Yeah. You got to hit your mark. You got to make sure that you're in, you hit your mark. So you're in focus. You got to make sure that you are, are facing the right way. So somebody doesn't have to do an, another setup because you decided to face north instead of south. Like there's so many technical things that go into yeah, acting. That you haven't even started the point of uh, what, 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 what do I feel here? What's, what's well, the scene? Right. And all that I just said. <laughs> I didn't even talk about the relationship with the other actors and who I am in the scene. It was literally walk five steps, hit this mark, remember these lines. How do you feel about the lines? Why are you saying the lines? None of that had come into play yet. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's layers to this that I think when you just watch us, you know, cracking wise on TV, you think, oh, it's easy. I could do that. Mm. Everybody, it's it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. It's a hard job. And it's one of yeah. the things when I decided that I wanted to pursue it because I came from the world of stand up, mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to take seriously and I wanted to go to class and yeah. then I wanted to, um, because I didn't like it when I would see either actors or wrestlers or musicians <laughs> come over from their world and come into stand up and just yeah. be like, I can just do it. Yeah. I can just talk. I just know a few wrestlers who are like, oh, yeah, I've done a few shows every time I do an hour. And it's just like, well, it must do suck. You, yeah, do you do an hour? Like, yeah, are you just good talking? Hour? You're talking, but you're not crafting jokes for Yeah, and I just didn't want to have that. And I knew how much that made me mad. And so mm-hmm. I didn't want to go into... Uh, into roles where there's like real actors and and then they're doing it and i'm just like well i just tell jokes you yeah know? it's so like come on man it, yeah. it's a, i knew that there had to be a lot of um respect and and work put in and i and i love it and, yeah. and i and one things that i love about you um when we talked about your professionalism i love your 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 hustle you're like one of the hardest working actors in 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 the world Thanks, i will say Ron. um and you talk about the day, like you were on the reel this morning mm-hmm. and it was just because someone dropped out and, and you took that spot. And that's just something I don't think people think about, but that's part of this job is being available, being ready so that you can go in and showcase your skills. So then someone can see you and be like, oh, maybe I want to bring them in right. for a role. And you're a person that I, and how we usually meet up is that I, I met you on <laughs> the set of Powerless. Yes. For the day. I had been a fan for a long time though, before no, that mutual, moment. But, but that's where we met where we and met. then we would just see each other because like oh i'm doing a talk show there you are yep. doing a talk show i'm doing a game show there, there you, you are, are doing we're the same catching game. a flight there you are <laughs> yeah. yeah and so then can be where it's like oh we're we're doing the, we're hustling we're hustling we're and hustling. I, I think a lot of people don't see that part job because especially 
I think about people like me who have at least I can go do if things aren't popping, I can go do stand up and mm-hmm. get on the road. But that's not necessarily what you do. Right. So like you have to go do these game shows and these mm-hmm. talk shows. Mm-hmm. And I don't think people understand that part of that job. But yeah. You, and you're really good at it. Thank you. Can you explain a little bit to people about about that cycle and what what that's yeah. about? Um, I actually. OK. The blessing of this business is that if you've worked a long time, which I've been blessed to do, you have a lot of residual income. So I have been acting on television and in film since 2003. So that's 16 years of money coming in from stuff I did forever ago. Now it's two cents at this point, 75 cents on a good day, Mm -hmm. but it's still money coming in. So I never have to feel that complete panic that something's not going to come in this month to pay my bills. So when I do a talk show or a game show, that I'm doing because I love it. <laughs> like I actually, me and game shows, Ron. Whoo, oh yeah, you're really good. Oh, I love them so much. You're really good. Yeah, you, well, you, and I was on your team and you terrified me. Did I scare you? <laughs> Why did I scare you kept you? kicking me out of the car. Well, I had to get you out because you were taking too long to well, add to say my, what you well, had to say. How do I talk? I, I don't know talk you do. I know like you do. That. that wasn't your game. That wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't the place for you to shine. You had other places to shine. You're trying to win these people some money. Get out the car. Get out of here. You were very gracious every time I kicked you out. Though I have to say that we, when we were on Hollywood Game Night, but. Um, and in for for filling in for the real this morning, um, I also never want someone to suffer if I can help. And that's not just as an entertainer. Like I'm I'm the kind of person that's, you know, I'm in a grocery store parking lot and somebody's putting their they have a kid and they're putting their food in there's food into their car. I'm the one that takes their cart back for them. Like that's just who I am as a person. So when I got the call about the real and they were like somebody fell out, I'm like I'm I live down the street. I'm gonna come. Not thinking, I'm also doing Ron's podcast today and I might be tired because the reel starts at like five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. But, you know, you 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 lean on reserves that you don't know you have. And I got some delicious coffee made by your lovely mom. So I am bright and bushy tail and these bright lights. So I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> but it's also like, I think I, I think I have the mindset of the old time performers in that you're supposed to be able to do more than one thing. Like you, you. I like talk shows, I like podcasts, I like voiceovers, I like movies, I like, you know, game shows, like I like all of it. I'm a fan of all of it. And if I can find a way to excel in each each genre, I'm gonna try. I don't always succeed, but I'll try. The one, two things that I will never try, and this is right hand to God, stand up <laughs> and dancing. Because I believe, and I've said this before, I believe those are the two purest forms of entertainment. I believe those are the two forms where you literally, it's you in a brick wall or you and your your point shoes or you and your tap shoes and you have to on your own entertain with just what you come on the stage with. There's no lines, it's you and your mic, you know, you and your, your talent. And so I respect those two uh, parts of the industry so much that if I'm ever called a stand up or a comedian, I correct people. I go, I'm a comedic actress. I'm not a stand up. I'm not a comedian. I want people to, I want to give honor to the people that do it for a living. It is not easy. I have lots of friends that are stand ups. You don't just show up and go, hey, I'm going to, j-. no. You, they craft jokes. They literally sit and try and they go on the road and they try them and they try them and they try them and they, they're always weaning and pruning. And that's a, that's a skill set I don't have. So those are the two that I won't. But everything else, <laughs> everything else, I'm going to try to get up in there. Is that come from just a way to entertain yourself or because I know I, I I'm very similar in that mm-hmm. and um, I've have tried the dancing didn't go well. You see, uh, <laughs> know your lane, Ron. Know your lane. Yeah, you, well, you don't know until you try. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. And uh, but a lot of for me is just that like I don't. I never even thought that I, when I started stand up, I was like, if I can make enough money to pay my rent, right. I'm killing it. Yeah. And so then when I'm like, oh, I'm on TV, I'm on doing yeah. these things. And now they're asking me if I want to act or do things. And it's just like, well, for, like you said, like, no, everything is icing. And I want to just like, I'll Why try not? this. I'll try Listen, that. Why not? I see the way I look at entertainment is I've said this before. I see it as an offering. I don't see performing for me as a way to get from people, I see it as a way to give mm-hmm. to people. And that comes from, again, being a single, single, um, growing up in a single parent home. My mom would come home tired and me and my brother would be like, yay, rock, rock, da, 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 da. you know, like, let me, I'm gonna dance for you, mommy, watch me sing. So we, we wanted to give what we had to lift her spirits or to make her not think about the nine hours she just worked. And so that has carried me in this industry where everything is giving. Like when I do a game show, 
I'm not on a game show to promote what I'm working on. I'm not even on a game show to win money for myself. Um, most of what we went on game shows goes to charities anyway, but that's why I'm there for the money for the charity and to help someone else get money to buy their house or to get the wedding ring for the person they want to propose to. It's a gift. It's a giving, you know, and I think it's one of the, the best blessings in the world to be able to use the gift God gave you as a blessing to other people. And I'm in no way saying I'm blessed with talent, but no, whatever little portion I got, I try to make sure I plant it back somewhere else and, and use it for good. Yeah, well, I think it's just about being a positive force in the world. That's in the that goal. Way. That's the goal. And that that can be in any form. If you were a billionaire, that's the way you yeah. could just throw money throw around. Throw money around. But if I am not, so yeah. talent. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that leads me to a couple things I want right. to talk about. Um, I'll back up into one because I feel like some people would be confused because you were on a show that it's so... Um, renowned and people have such a respect for mm -hmm. his community and went for several seasons i think yeah. people will be like oh yvette must be rich Ooh, they're wrong exactly <laughs> okay, so we're also wrong and i and that's not i mean if you had asked me before i because i'm getting on my first show and I, then i go oh we don't get to ask for, they're deciding that they're going to keep the show that's so we right. don't get to ask for a raise that's right and so then i'm like going like oh that's like four or five that's like that was every year for you guys every single year i the thing about me and this is something for people of color in the industry that i'll explain to people that don't know your quote for a show is always based on the last money you got Okay, and I think the, the law might have changed now where they're not allowed to ask anymore, but this is how it was in the beginning. If you're a person of color, you don't get as many at-bats as other people do. So your your ability for your quote to rise doesn't happen as often as other people. So if you're not a person of color and you're in the industry, you may go out three or four hundred times during a pilot season. That's that's a lot. I'm, it's not that much, but I have friends that go out three or four times a day for pilots. If you're a person of color in this industry, you may go out three or four times the entire pilot season. So, and you may get a show, you may not, where my friends that are uh, not black or not people of color, they get a show every year. And that means their quota is going up every single year. So by the time I get on set 10 years in the business, my quote will maybe less than someone that just got here six months ago because they, they just have more opportunities to raise their quote. And then once you do a show, your quote, you get a two and a half percent raise, I think, every year. So it's not like if you're on a hit, I ain't never been on like an out the door hit. So I don't know what that's like to be like on friends or whatever. If you're not on a hit, you don't have a chance to go. Can I get a raise? You take your two and a half percent. So that's how you can be on a show five or six years and be making what someone who just got in the industry makes. So they think you're they're backing up the Brinks truck and they're just not. So you have to learn to uh, be a good steward over your money make sure that you um, don't live an extravagant life, always live below your means. And and listen, I'm very aware that what we make in Hollywood is way more than regular regular jobs anywhere else. So I'm not acting like I'm, you know, in poverty, but no, it's not, it's we're, a, I'm not, Yeah, please, I'm not balling out of control. It's just sure. something and also because then the people, I mean, I'm sure you as real recently, tax bills. <laughs> when they come and just take half of it, like they literally, they literally just come and go, I'm, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. What I pay in taxes is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. It's ridiculous. That's yeah, it is. I was basically mad this year. I was like, you guys are shut down. Yeah. Why, why are you calling me? <laughs> Anybody work here? You don't know. Yeah. yeah. Leave yeah. it alone till yeah. you get back up and running. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and we're very sorry about the people that are affected by the shutdown. Absolutely. Send your letters. <laughs> <laughs> Ron. <laughs> but I like what you said a bit about, about um, the pilots and, and with dealing with people of color. And it's something that has changed as there's more and more streaming options and there's Oh, shows yeah. being being helmed by people of color yeah. uh but overall in mm -hmm. the network system the which you and i both m primarily Moving. live Moving. in there is um usually like we need we need one black person oh, and they usually hire the one black person after they've hired everyone else which means the budget is a five you get five dollars and a ham sandwich <laughs> Ron, we love you. And we're going to, you're going to work your 12 hours a day and we're going to give you $5 and a ham sandwich. Yeah. That's the one thing that I have a good handle on because mm -hmm. of the stand up is I have the ability to just be like, okay, I'll just, I'll I can just, go make more yeah, money. Yeah. Go on make the money road. doing that. Right. Yeah. That's why it's good to have another income stream. And I think for me, my, st my version of stand up is voiceover. I, I do uh, cartoons and, and, and they're, 
way more lucrative than most television gigs for sure. Yeah, for and 15 more, minutes of work. more active and, and consistent. That's what one thing that um, I remember we worked on the Trolls movie and then the Trolls TV show was coming like, up. I ain't never done it. I want I want that animated film. Come on, <laughs> Disney and Pixar. Holla at your girl. I'm sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> Ryan, I'm telling you, that's the dream. I'm trying to try to get my Shrek. Trying to get my Shrek and my Frozen oh, on, y'all. Trust me. I did not Ooh. when I did it, I was just like, oh, this will be fun. And then five years later, I'm like, this is the best decision. The best I decision have ever made. As they back up the Brinks truck. In my Ryan life. is a very nice I house, everybody. Watching it. He's a very nice house, I'm just saying. <laughs> We were watching Trolls on FSX <laughs> last, last night. You better go on and last watch and get night. your own money. Stream <laughs> your own stuff so they can send you a check. <laughs> but it is um, just that. And then they were doing the cartoon on Netflix and none of the other actors in the movies were doing the cartoon. Did. But I did because I was like, I need, I won't, I'm not. Oh, the, they, oh, they didn't want to do it. Um, They didn't want to do it. But I was just like, I'll do I, it. I, do it. I don't have anything else. I will do but, it. They were like, well, none of the other people would do it. I go, well, I am the least successful person. So <laughs> and I'm fine with it. <laughs> and I'm fine with it. When do I come to record? <laughs> and I it's agree. been the best decision because they just did the fifth, fifth season just debuted. And I'm, I've never been in five seasons of anything tell you something when that money keeps coming in to think about about uh cartoons and animation stuff they air forever forever absolutely it's really a beautiful and thing kids just keep they keep watching rewind. same thing with doing like a nickelodeon or a disney show and i think overall um one thing i've been thinking about is that it helps me continue to build an audience and my audience gets younger because these Every are people year, are yeah. having my voice in their head as, as a child. And, and I might not be, reap the benefit of that until 15, yeah. 16 years down the road. I'm, I'm living that now, Ron, because I did uh, Drake and Josh in 2004. And so we're, what, 15 years out from that. And a lot of the kids that, that loved it then are now content creators. They're now producers and writers and directors. And there's a very performers that are on ch ch kids shows reside in a very special place in people's hearts you, you right now you can think of who your favorite you know actors were when you were a kid Keenan Thompson there you go <laughs> and so whatever Keenan does mm -hmm. take my money yeah. right so it kind of becomes that where the babies that love you w when you're in their their formative years and they're watching you when they grow up and they become directors and writers and producers they want to work with somebody that they love when they were a kid and so it's really a great blessing and a gift that continues giving it's beautiful. Yeah. That's something I'll look out for. No you better wait. You. You give yourself another five years. About to, get, <laughs> about to get so nice for you. <laughs> um, another thing I really like about you, and we can talk about our few, if you're not comfortable, we'll move on. But you're, I mean, I think you will be because yeah. you always talk about it, but you're a very strong woman of faith. I am. And, and you're always um, willing to talk about that. And I, I yeah. think that's beautiful, especially out here in LA mm -hmm. when you and must work with a lot of people of, of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and people just love you no matter what Aww. and you're so sweet but I think it just the 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 um, sweetness and the faith and you really shows Thanks, and um, how is that is that difficult in LA at all it's not difficult for me because uh, I'm a I'm a Christian that actually thinks that God is love <laughs> I don't know wh wh where people got the idea that as a Christian, you're supposed to be hateful and, and mean and um, and tell everybody where they're going to go when they die. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't have anything to do with what God and you do and talk. I, all he told me to do was love you. And that's all I try to do. I try to love everybody that I that I meet and I try to model love and I try to be uh, a safe place to land on sets and just anywhere. I don't care if I'm in Ralph's grocery store. If something goes down, I hope that people go. I can go to her. It reminded me of... Um, Fred Rogers said that when things go down, look for the helpers. I've always felt like I was a helper. And I, I feel like my greatest gift is support. My greatest gift is cheerleading and encouragement um, of anyone, everyone. And so I try to live my life as someone that is, is, is safe for people. And that if they see me, they feel like she, she'd be okay with me. I could be friends with her because they could be. Mm -hmm. Anybody could be. You know now, what I mean? I have a question that yeah. goes with that. Has that opened yourself up to uh, to be taken advantage before of uh, before in the past? I mean, I would say that it could have, but I'm also from East Cleveland. Mm. Yeah, that's that balance. So, that's why you and my yeah. mom got along. Oh, so come on, well. me and your mom, we had we had a time. <laughs> me and Mama had a time. We had a really great conversation. But um, 
yeah, I'm nobody's fool. And, and I also don't suffer fools gladly. So, and, and the other greatest gift besides love that God gave me is discernment. I see you coming. Mm -hmm. I see you coming. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to be rude to you or hateful to you, but it just means that I'm aware. Oh, I see you coming. Yeah. It's cool though. I see. Very similar. In that yeah. Regard. You like that too? You can oh, see Oh yeah. That's what yeah. my therapist says. Oh yeah. It's like, oh, okay. She's like, you are watching. You're oh yeah. Watching. And I think it's also because I have the demeanor of being so chill and low key and mm -hmm. pothead that people mm -hmm. will, um, dismiss me a bit yeah. and i'm like at that's the peril. best thing at you can peril. do because i'm watching i'm always watching yeah and i think they think for me because i'm nice that i'm dumb yeah and i'm not and i also run into this a lot on twitter because i really have no problem snatching people up like if yeah. you come with some foolishness we gonna dance and and i will you I, you're helen on drake and josh i am but i'm also eat that and I see what you're doing. Like, you're not going to come up in here and be crazy. We yeah. don't do that here. I try that. Um, sometimes I go overboard. I'm do girl. you? I'm a, nah, I I've depends on who you, you ask. Overboard. Well, I guess my um, robot, she doesn't like it when I curse at people. Mm. Um, def for what reason, though, do you curse at people? Uh, you just when they're being foolish or mm -hmm. being overly mean. And I always try to do it the right way. And I have rules because yeah. like, I'll call people bitches or hoes. But I'm always yeah. like, only if they're men. I will mm. never call a woman that. Yeah. You know? It's and a good so, rule. Um, but I think sometimes people don't see that. And sometimes yeah. people don't see what got me mad in the first place. Yeah. And I have no notice now like i've just pulled out like some random tweets to me and i'm like oh these are funny maybe i am mad maybe yeah. i'm not but like i'm an artist and yeah. some, i create off of my emotion right but then the next thing you know there's like two or three blogs writing about i've never heard anything bad about you ever oh thank ne you I never and, and, and never so that's shocking to me i think listen uh even jesus got mad by the way jesus flipped some tables in the bible so it's not like <laughs> He's saying you can't get mad. He says you can be mad, just don't sin. So there's a way to be righteously upset about some injustice or something that's not right. You're just not supposed to be doing, you know, bad things to people because of it. Yeah. So that's the thing. And um, I just feel like um, you just need to be respectful of people all the time and as respectful as you can be. Because I've the the one group of people that I am not super careful what i say to our racist mm -hmm. if i deal with someone that's a racist or who's mean-spirited yeah i oh yeah we don't we yeah. don't do that dance you know i, I try, agree I'm trying to be no polite. point and there's yeah. no point in trying to convince a person who, who hates who's, you yeah whose argument is that you're lower than them exactly and so it's like okay like i then what you want me to do is just curse you out right. <laughs> so i will right. do that now i do now this is where i what i try to do and this is not i'm not saying that in my private life what i'm thinking of them is this but i try to model the behavior that i would like to receive yes and i try to I'm gonna get you told, you, it's, but it's gonna be a classy read. Yeah, I'm gonna read you. It's gonna be a classy <laughs> read. And most of them, I've found that most racists are not smart enough to realize that they've been handled. Mm -hmm. They don't understand sarcasm because they're not smart. Yeah. Because if they were smart, they'd realize that everybody's equal. So they're not smart. And so the finer points of what I'm saying and the way I'm saying it, they just don't get it. And that's even extra funny to me. So I really enjoy you know toying with them and oh, i love your twitter it's one thank of the best you. well thank you honey but i like it yours seems as well. like so many so many people come after you mm -hmm. lately um and it's it's oh, what's the exact word i'm looking for i guess it's not a surprise it's but a surprise to me to it's all. it's such a it's gross mm -hmm. that that it feels that they feel very comfortable to me because you're a black woman. Oh yeah. That they that they would come at you harder than I think they would me or right or you know any other or, or Which any is man. So ridiculous because the fiercest people on this planet are black women. Yeah. Like I feel like that was a fool's errand. You really thought you could come in here and just say whatever you want. Well, let's dance. Yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy showing them the truth of who I am. <laughs> I love it. I feel like you you don't know me. So you're going to meet me today. Because the other thing that's very true about me, I don't go to anyone's page and wreak havoc. Mm -hmm. I don't. They think they're dealing with Shirley. Yeah. Oh, I'm not Shirley. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not Helen. I swear I'm not. You know. Um, and I, and I again, I don't bring my fire to anybody. They come to me. And it's, it's always, the funny thing is, I, I love how it plays out. Because they come and say something shitty. Excuse me. Can I cuss? Yeah. Say something shitty. And then I respond. You know, and then we go back and forth and I retweet some of the foolishness that they say. And then it devolves into you. Uh, I'm you. You're picking on me. Am I? You came here. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know why you're so mean. Am I mean? You came here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, like yeah. it's it all it's all that. And then it's what can we? Well, I'm I'm done now. Let's stop. Oh, you're done. But I'm not. Yeah. Like I, I want to keep going all day now. Now yeah, that we're together, you're acting crazy. Am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if you're gonna. This is my thing. If you're gonna be bold enough to step to someone, have a thick skin. Make sure that you're intelligent enough intelligent enough to do the dance with that particular person. Pick your pick your victim, you know, in a, in an intelligent way, because you don't want to match wits with someone you don't match wits with. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm like, bring it. I'm ready. Yeah, but there's I think there's a balance where sometimes where I I always remember the line from the Jay Z song where he's like, "Wise man says you don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell can't who. tell who's who." Yeah, and I have spent a lot, and it, usually it depends on my mood because sometimes people are like, "Oh, you have oh you must not be successful. You have all this time to respond to me." It's like, no, I have all this time to respond to you because, because I, I am successful. Yeah. Because I am successful. <laughs> I have free time. Because I ain't got to be tied to a computer somewhere. <laughs> and I tell people too, I'm like, I started out as a legal secretary. I type 75 words a minute. I literally am watching MS. NBC talking to my friend on the phone and vanquishing you in the same at the same time. <laughs> I'm a woman. I multitask. It's nothing to to handle a troll. Is literally dot 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 send. It's nothing to it. It's fun. It's so much fun, okay, Brian. You're making me sick. I'm gonna get back in. There. Get in there, Ron. <laughs> get in there, Ron. Get up in there. The water's nice. Get in, get in there, Ron. I think it is fun because that's is. The part of it is that um, we get scared that like you say the wrong thing you're going to lose a job and I'm always because um, we're bringing it up around the house my mom will say that robot will talk to me about that and I'll just be like anyone who's losing these jobs because of things they said are saying horrible, horrible things. things not the truth yeah it's not because I cursed out someone yeah. on a thing it's like half the time I mean there's been some times where people have I've gotten some emails from my manager but I'm usually like you know who you're dealing with you know who i am i don't i don't know anyone at this point that doesn't know who i am i got there was something that went down with the third lady um and her press secretary <laughs> you know who i'm talking about uh just think about it the third lady mm -hmm. and uh my twitter blew up blew up for like three or four days and um i apologized to the companies that i'm my comments may have affected I never apologize for what I said because I'm not sorry about what I said because what I said was the truth. And then people started writing me and started adding other companies, which, you know, at The Walking Dead, you gonna let event back on? And I retweeted and included The Walking Dead and said, hey, dear Walking Dead, if you never wanna hire me again, feel free. I support you in that. You gotta pay your bills. I ain't trying to mess you up, but I'm gonna keep talking. Yeah. So you can call out everybody that I've worked for. I don't care because I'm gonna be on the right side of history. I make sure what I say is the truth because I was a legal secretary nobody's going to sue me because I'm not lying. <laughs> so let's do the dance. And you're not going to try to silence me because you don't like that I'm telling the truth. Again, I will end all of this on the right side of history. And if that means I end it on McDonald's on fries because I said the truth and people didn't like it and didn't hire me, I'll just be at McDonald's on fries. The fries are delicious. I would probably get them for free. But I think one thing that I learned is because when I've, I've done some interviews and they ask me questions about... Uh, like Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. or things like that and I will tell what I believe yeah. and then afterwards people will be like oh usually everybody tries to get around it you like you actually just said something and, yeah. you, and I'm just like yeah this is if you ask me a question what's I'll wrong answer. with what's wrong listen there's only it's only a problem to speak your mind if you're not willing to deal with the consequences of what you said if you play it, if you, I'm about that life like I literally have decided that if I lose it all because I told the truth then I'm supposed to lose it all. Yeah. I'm not, I, this This industry is not precious to me in that way. I'm not going to, if I have to leave my morals behind to go forward, if I have to leave what I know mm -hmm. to be right behind to go forward, I will not go forward. I'm going to speak against injustice. I'm gonna speak against racism. I'm gonna speak against evil and corruption in high places. I'm going to do it publicly and I'm not gonna back down. If, I, if you never see me on TV because of those things, I will be somewhere happy because it's fine. I did the right thing. We have to have, we have to become, people that do the right thing no matter what we're here talking on martin luther king day he did the right thing and lost his life we're not even being asked to die for what we say ron why are we parsing our words and it's not even unto death so i don't get a, a, an endorsement because i said something about donald trump if what i said about donald trump is true fine by me you know what i mean like this is the fight of our lives. I was just talking about this today and, and it being Martin's day makes me really think about the fact that 
He was trying to make things better for everybody, not just black people. He was trying to make this nation, the, the nation that we claim to be. And they killed him. They killed him. And we're in a world now where somebody is in power declaring that an entire race of people are rapists and murderers and drug, drug dealers, an entire race. They're so scary that we have to build a wall to keep them out when the danger is in 1600 pen. And I'm not supposed to speak about that because I might not get to be on TV. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. I agree with you. I mean, the lesson my mom taught me a long time ago is that, you know, if I just want the people who are going to be with me who, who are who with you me, are, yeah. who, are, who I am. That's right. I don't, and I said that before. I, and it happened when my special came out. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of new fans come in, and Giggle people fit. get weird. And Giggle they, fit. <laughs> check it out. Check it out. And then I slowly was blocking people, changing things, or if anything, um, some people were mad at me because I did a podcast with, with, with Chris Hardwick, mm -hmm. and I was like, why, why wouldn't I? This is the guy who supported me my mm -hmm. whole time. I've done. I'm not saying I know. I don't know. We don't. Neither one of us know. I don't know. know. I don't know nothing and so uh, until i do know mm -hmm. i'm gonna go off the information that i have my prayer has always been for everyone to be okay period i want everybody to be okay i want every truth that needs to come out to come out and for everybody to be okay mm -hmm. that's all i got and i make sure that whatever i say and do because all i can be all we can really be in control of is who we are right what I put out in the world, who I am in this space. That's all I have control over. The rest is other people's, they have to figure it out. We all have to figure out our existence through fear and trembling and pray that we are not doing anything to harm someone else. And when we find out that we are, to make it better. Absolutely. To apologize, to repent and turn from our wicked ways. That's all we can do. Absolutely. The rest is between that person and God. Absolutely. And that's how I put it. It was just that. I can't believe people got upset with you about they that. They did. I mean, and, and they kept tweeting at me about it because then I would, because then the, my anti Louis C.K. thing came out mm. and they were like, oh, but you like Hardwick? And I'm like, yeah. We, those are two completely different things yeah. and i'm not going to live in this world of extremism where you you find out something about someone whether it's true or not and the things and then you just throw someone away and that's never how i've been and it will never be that way that would make me a bad person mm -hmm. and so i'd be like yeah this is a person who supported me supported my friends male and female mm -hmm. and and I, and i know a lot of his ex-girlfriends and things of that nature and so and again i don't know it could still all be true but until I Could know be. that, I'm not going to change my behavior around a person. I'm going to do my due diligence. And if I find out I'm wrong, I will apologize yep. and I will change my behavior. But until then, I'm not going to jump to a conclusion. The other thing that I think people are forgetting when we throw people away um, is that you might be the only version of decency they see. You might be the only person in that person's life that is modeling proper behavior. So if they are thrown to the wolves and no one, and I'm not saying that uh, the entire world, especially people that have been assaulted or, or hurt should just be kumbaya because I'm not kumbaya with the racist. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Yeah. But if there's someone that is around a racist, I pray that you would do your due diligence and speak into that person's dark black soul and try to tell them the truth about what this world is supposed to be. And it's the same thing for people that are, you know, dealing with, cause even, you know, let's just go here, talk about R. Kelly for a minute. I hope somebody's in R. Kelly's life that can tell him to stop touching young girls. If that's what he's doing, allegedly, I don't know. I think he is though. <laughs> I think he is. But if there's somebody in his life that can be like, hey dude, like what are you doing? It ain't gonna be me. I, I'm like mute R. Kelly, but maybe somebody around him is not mute R. Kelly. That person needs to be like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when somebody somebody has to do the hard work. Yeah, there somebody needs to be has to help check and balances in your life all, at all yeah. times so that there are people who aren't just there profiting off of you who will stay. Because I, I just know I have people in, I no doubt, not that it would ever come up like that, mm -hmm. but I have people in my life that if I step out, if they just see you my look ego, like you look like they'll be like, hey, yeah, Ron, guess what? And you're supposed to have people around you that will pull your chain and go, look, because this is the thing too, and, and this is not true for every person that has done something horrible. But there's some people that are doing horrible things that, and I'm not talking about assault. Assault, y'all know what you're doing. But if somebody's just a jerk or just rude or just mean to crew or whatever, 
I, I'm choosing to believe for most of those people, they don't realize the effect that they're having on other people. Now, maybe they never thought about it because they're an asshole, but they don't know. So somebody should be like, hey, man, <laughs> you need to be nice to people. So who's going to do that but somebody that's around them to say, hey, hey, man. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a it's a slippery slope to even for us to even be discussing it because, you know, people get upset. Um, <laughs> they, do, Ron, they do. They do. And I I am. It's hard for me because I'm a woman mm -hmm. and I believe women. Of course. You know what I mean? Um, well, but as a man, I believe women. But no, well, but, no, but let me say this. As a black woman, though, I do know a lot of black men, Emmett Till, that have been lied on someone to death, Emmett Till. So then it's hard for me to be like, rah, rah, believe every woman because should I believe the woman that said Emmett Till? Yeah. See oh, I've done the same thing. I have friends, it's hard, man. Com comedian friends, and, and, and you understand where they're coming from because a lot of them have been assaulted or right. whatever, and I had a friend post that, and she was just like, believe all women mm -hmm. because even the men that I know who have been falsely accused, their lives weren't negatively affected that much. And then oh, I go, So then I wow, go, oh, you know it. Emmett Till? That's, a, <laughs> that's it that's an interesting take on it so they're saying believe all women because even if the the two percent or whatever that might be not telling the truth it, it people aren't that hurt by it is that what she's saying that's what she was saying i don't think she mm. i think if we had that conversation she might not want to stand by that i think it was a tweet that she made yeah. that she didn't really think about mm -hmm. especially once i sent her the emmett till she was like oh okay right you know but that that is something and and uh I mean, I'm a firm believer in, in it's hard to live in a world or a society where we're supposed to go believe all women and also innocent into proven guilty. Because so both those yeah. things don't make sense together. I kind of feel like this. Um, I'm going to tell I'm going to tell a story that I don't I don't. This is something I share all the time, but I don't know that I've ever shared it publicly. So if you've got anyone else reshares this, give me my credit. What kind of humble person asks for credit. Give me <laughs> my credit. Um, OK, so. I believe the reason I don't get involved in what someone has done and, and judging them is one, because God told us judge not lest you be judged. We are ill-equipped to be able to judge someone what happens. But the other reason I don't is because I saw this amazing episode of the X-Files and they followed Cigarette Smoky Man home. Do you remember this episode? Do you ever see this episode? Okay, for those who don't know, Cigarette Smoky Man was like the big bad on one of the big bads on, on um, X-Files. Every bad thing that ever happened Martin Luther King's assassination, whatever you, you name it. There's a picture. You look, you zoom in on the picture, the cigarette smoking man in the background. He has something to do with it. So they followed um, him home one day and nobody ever knew who he was. They couldn't get him. They followed him home one day. He opens the door. There's a stack of manila envelopes by the door and a fresh one has just been arrived, just arrived from the postman. So he takes it out and he looks at it and in it is a manuscript. And on top of the manuscript is a letter that says, dear cigarette smoking man. I don't know what his name was. Maybe it was John. Dear cigarette smoking man. We regret to inform you that we will not be publishing your manuscript. <laughs> so he puts this stack back in the manila envelope and puts it on top, this the thing, and puts it back on top of the stack. So you see in that moment that Cigarette Smoky Man has like 30 rejections for his, his manuscript. And you see his face. And more than anything in the world, he wants his book to be published. Something clicked in me when I saw that episode because I thought to myself, no one knows that he's a writer. No one knows that this is his greatest dream, but God knows. So everybody doing dirt, hear me out, hear me. Everybody doing dirt, God knows what your secret dream is. And he will come down out of eternity and put his thumb right in the middle and you will never have that thing. So whenever I see someone appear to get away with something and I know I'm looking in their eyes and I know that they assaulted someone or I know that they hurt people or I know that they're as wretched as everybody says they are. Mm -hmm. I always take a step back and go, they got a stack of manuscripts at home. <laughs> it may not literally be manuscripts, but there is something in that wretched person's life that they want more than anything that they will not have. Yeah. And that allows me to step back and go, God's got it. Yeah. Well, that's a true belief in karma. And that's Karma's gangster. I've said I it believe before. in for real. I remember when I was younger and in my 20s and I wasn't necessarily living as I, I should have, I fully felt the karma. Oh, I yeah. could feel it all the time. Yeah. It, seems like, it just felt like I was stepping in shit all the time. All the time. Karma comes quick too when you, when you, know, when you know what's right and you do wrong, karma comes like that. Absolutely. It's immediate. And I think you see it. You even see it in the person like Louis because I think I mean, money and everything, I'm sure he wants that. 
but he also seems like a guy who really likes credit and likes respect and to have that all taken away from him mm -hmm. and and that's why he's walking around going like i lost it all even though it's like dude you did a what you've lost is a fraction compared to what you did to the, the, those women, some of which were my friends. Yeah. And it's just like you stunted their careers, you stunted their trust, you stunted their growth as human beings. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. And so it's like this is the this is the karma that you deserve. You yeah. deserve to just be doing shitty gigs where people are recording your set and not wanting you to. And it obviously shows that he cares about it because he continues to want to go up because yeah. if he didn't want to, he could just Manuscripts. sit at home with his money. Manuscripts manuscripts stack of them <laughs> stack of manuscripts okay i feel like i the last thing i want to really talk to you about a mm -hmm. little bit is real um relationships sure. and things what like are that. those uh, that's why i wanted to talk about <laughs> I remember when, we, when we had a long conversation at the, the airport plane, yeah. yeah that was a good flight man. it was a great flight at the time I, um i didn't have a girlfriend you did no, not no. and you already well that was like when eight months mm, how long ago was that huh? about a year was that a year ago yeah okay yeah. yeah, we were both singles. Yeah, yeah, I was newly. No, it wasn't even a year ago because I had just broken up. That was like. And you were dating. It you was were going like, out with some guy and you didn't like him. I didn't like him. And because of you, we were on the plane and I. <laughs> do you want me to tell what you did? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was, I'm on some of the dating apps and I, and I opened up some of the pictures to show Ron. And I don't know if it was the ancestor speaking to you with, through the drums, but you literally were like, no, not him because he blah, blah, blah. Like Ron was looking at the pictures and us uh, with through discernment going, no, this one right here, it's got this issue and you're not going to like that. And I'm like, right. And so with your help that day, I sent the text to one of the guys going, yeah, man, this is not going to work. And then he replied before we even took off. He, he wrote back and was like, well, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate, you know, your kindness and letting me know. And then that was, it was off. I was off. Black was off guys my always plate. sound just like that. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, you know, listen, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you being a lady and telling me you don't want to date me no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we talked about because we were saying like you didn't like him but he but it would have clogged up your time because yeah. he would have hung around for a while while you were like deciding if you didn't like him when this you already is, knew yeah but this is the thing too that i realized about myself like i need to take myself off of the dating sites and maybe just accept that i'm gonna be single for the rest of my life because what happens is because of my my kindness and not wanting to hurt anybody anytime i get a a uh, message, I tend to just respond to go, thank you so much for liking my picture or thank you so much for your kind message. And I think that God, most women don't respond at all. I think they think because I responded that it's a match, mm -hmm. but it's not. And mm -hmm. so then they start, well, so what would you like to do? And I'm like, oh no, like now I'm in the, should we get coffee? And I never wanted to get coffee. And it's nothing against the guys. It's just, you know, it wasn't a match. I was just trying to be polite. And so yeah. then I end up. Yeah. But then it's what we talked about. I think sometimes there are the things, especially in, in, in women, I think, and sometimes especially in black women where you, they want to be, which is often not the case. But <laughs> <laughs> well, finish it so I know whether it's the case uh, or not. What were you very, about to say? Be very accommodating. Be Always, very, yeah. uh, you know, to, to bend over a bit and, and just be there be supportive be yeah. there for your man even though if that's not your man yet yeah you know and, and i also don't want to be the reason that we talked yeah, yeah i talked that it, to, say yeah it, say i don't want to be the he may not be my husband but he's someone's husband and i don't want to be the reason that he takes another six months to be ready because i didn't say it or did something that has now further damaged him and so then the next chick is gonna have to deal with the mess i did to him so yeah and then yeah. i told you that i've firmly believe that it's very egotistical <laughs> yes and tell, me, and, and, right, and tell them why tell them why because who, why you think you're such a big yeah. deal that you're going to start you're going to stunt this guy well, no life. but i mean i could if this guy and not because he thinks i'm great but just because he's putting himself out there and he's trying and he's being a decent person and then i'm like yeah hey, thank man, you i'll tell you enough. one thing guys don't have a problem putting themselves out there really <laughs> they, see that's different for we women. live out there oh no, that's different for women because we literally are like well i m the, my friends i don't Know all women but my friends we're trying to be respectful of guys feelings and we don't put ourselves out oh, okay. there well, you so are rare. so to, <laughs> oh God. so to take that leap and to put yourself out there and then have someone go yeah i'm good like i don't want to do yeah. that to somebody yeah you know? I know and that did hurt when i was in sixth grade <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't hurt you anymore it doesn't hurt as much anymore uh, often i mean i think i am in a different perspective different position excuse me i think because i have my son and i have yeah. my my business and i have my things to do where i'm like okay if we're not a match don't waste my time yeah but the thing is, is there, if you talk to some women that are online a lot of men 
Not, not all, but a lot of men, when you say no, thank you. Well, you know, if, if you, I, I ain't like you, your pinky toe fat anyway. And it's like, whoa. So it's also the other reason where I'm kind of like, I don't want you to damage me either because I might have an issue with my fat pinky toe mm-hmm. and I need you not to point it out. So let me be kind to you so that maybe as we part ways, you will be kind to me. But also I think that that's the lesson you learn about that person right away if they can't handle rejection. 100%, but it still hurts. Yeah, for when sure. When somebody attacks you because you just say no thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons me and, and, and my girl are together is that we met online mm-hmm. uh, she had one picture mm-hmm. and so I assumed she was a robot of some type which probably call her <laughs> Why robot. You call a robot and um, we went on a couple of dates and then I was just I, I was not ready she was definitely um, she was a good girl to date she was mm-hmm. very she didn't really like wasn't very affectionate she was talking and chatty but we like maybe had like one kiss in mm-hmm. like the couple days and things and i was like well i'm i'm looking for these thoughts so <laughs> ron you said that to me that day too i'm like man come on man there ain't, that, there ain't nothing for you in that thought life no not really because i'm a sensitive boy yeah, exactly. they hurt my feelings come on they look at you because no, yeah, i thought then like oh hey we'll have fun then i didn't know you're also sleeping with my friend yeah you don't want that come no on, um and so then i went away for a bit but because I handled the same way where, I, where we went on a couple of dates and then I was like, look, I don't, I'm going to probably pursue some, someone else for a while. Um, but I really liked you, enjoyed hanging out with you and we just stayed and hanging out. You know what though? Friends. I think that's where you were when we met because if you've been with her a year, I think she, you were in the middle of let's take a minute and I'm going to go chase these thoughts for a minute. Cause mm-hmm. I think you said that to me on the plane. I'm like, Ron, so you hadn't met her. I don't think you were together together when I, when I saw you on the plane. Yeah. I think you're correct. Yeah. And then I just learned that that was, yeah, that's not me, but I also was, I had gotten out of another relationship. Right. So I just wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And it took me that. And then meeting back up with her and just talking with her and talking with her about comedy and, and mm-hmm. just niceness. She's a big proponent of just being niceness nice. This is so great. Yeah. Where I was like, like, oh you're you're great yeah. you're great and i wasn't ready to see it at that time yet yeah. um and so f- i mean i think that there's definitely a guy out there for you who is but you're such an exceptional person that is going to take some good digging because they won't come i don't know it's that hard I'm to find more though like i don't know like i i i i try like i gave it the old college try like a, what was it like six months ago? i don't know whenever we saw each other on a plane and it had crashed and burned and i don't know that i'm built for the uh, i don't like i'm okay i'm an introvert mm-hmm I don't like small talk. Yeah, me too. And, Double. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. And dating, especially when you're dating people you don't already know, is all about so like. And I'm like, ah, I hate it. So it's hard for me to. I I always in the past every boyfriend I had came from a friendship. Like I was mm-hmm. already we were in school together or we, we they lived on my cousin's street or whatever. And then it became something after I already knew them really really mm-hmm. well. I don't like getting to know people to see if I want to date them. Like yeah, that part that, is just I think like, that's just, a, it becomes just natural getting around a person and, you, and sparks will happen. Um, I think for you, are you meeting people at, at, at like things you want to do? Or are you going to bars or what? Are no, you I'm doing? not. A, I'm not a bar or club or party person. So that's part of it too. Um, and I don't know that I don't, most of the people at work, are already either in relationships or you know we're gypsies so if i unless they work on every show i work on i won't see them yeah um i don't know like i i kind of ha- no longer believe that it's something that i have to do i used to feel yeah, like of course. i gotta find my guy and now i'm kind of like i don't know that i do like i'm kind of just if god said this is your man and I knew it in my soul and my spirit i'd be like yes but as far as me trying to make it happen at this point this advanced age, Ron. I just don't know that I, I have the desire to do it anymore. Well, I think that's good. I think that's I think it. it's great. I think the exact think mindset you should have looking for it and, and hunting for it is exactly when you're you're willing to overlook people's faults. Ain't that, you, that the truth because you really want it. And I also think we need to change what we say in this society about what a woman is supposed to be. I think that we have decided that if you make it to a certain age and you don't have kids and you don't have a husband that you you've done something wrong or something's wrong with you i talked about this on wendy williams a few years ago because she kind of tried to be like well when are you gonna get married and i'm like 
what if I never get married? Does that mm. mean I'm not a, a viable woman? Does that mean that yeah, my life has that, been Why is it okay for wasted? George Clooney? Yeah. I and mean, he's married now with kids. I'm not a good oh, example, yeah. Ron. But yeah, for the, but they never, no one ever asks a guy of a certain age, well, you know, time's running out, buddy. When you're going it, to, it's never asked of a man because they're more than a husband and a father. But for some reason, women are treated as if their entire purpose of for being born was to marry and procreate. And don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have been a mom. I would have loved to have gotten married. It didn't happen for me, but it didn't happen. Not because there's something wrong with me. It just didn't happen. So that's okay. Like I don't go up to people that I started out in acting with who haven't reached a level of, of success that I haven't go, well, you better get to it. When you go, when you going to get that Emmy, (laughs) when you going to get that series regular, I don't have an Emmy, but you know, I don't say that to people because it's so much, all of that is out of their control. And in the same way, finding the perfect person for you is really out of your control. I could have a boyfriend today. Oh, yeah. I could literally walk out on the street and have a boyfriend by seven o'clock tonight. That's not me saying I'm great. Any woman could have a boyfriend today. Is it someone that is going to help me build? Is it someone that's going to be a, a an asset and not a liability? Is it someone that is mentally and spiritually mature enough to to handle my life? Has he handled his life? Like all of these things are necessities to have a productive relationship. I don't just want a relationship. I want, I want one that actually is doing something. I agree. I want to build something with someone. And so if I can't find that mix of man, I'm going to be single and it's okay, America. Like it's not the end of the world for a woman to be of a certain age and be single and no kids. I love it. I got nothing to add to that. That's amazing. Thank you, brother. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. where are we at time wise hosty Ooh, time uh, to land the plane gonna land the plane run <laughs> okay so we usually we wrap up by um i ask for either a piece of advice a thing that's been on your mind that you want to share with mm. the greater society uh just things that you that you feel is important that um you want to give to us give us a little gift mm. i know it's very vague but i promise you You'll nail it. Everyone does. Everyone nails it. Okay, so either a piece of advice or something that I want to talk about. I would like to say, and you decide whether this is advice or just something to talk about, that uh, kindness matters. And there is always a way to do all things with kindness and with love. It is up to you to figure out your way of doing it, but it is always possible. So if you have navigated a situation and you have not done it in kindness and love, you blame, you get to blame no one. That was a choice that you made. Um, Kindness changes the atmosphere. Kindness uh, opens up minds. Kindness creates opportunities. Um, Kindness helps you navigate life. So if you can't do it for other people, be kind for you because you reap the benefit of it. Um, I think that we become a coarser nation. I think we become a a more hateful nation. Um, And I think that is to our detriment. So um, try kindness. I think it's both. I think it's both and I completely agree with Mm -hmm. you. And I think that really kind of hit home for me recently is that I went and saw Carol Burnett. um, Love her so much. Uh, she did a talk at the Castro Theater in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and she didn't really bring up kindness that much, but just watching the clips and watching her talk to people and how she <laughs> dealt with people, um, not only did I just really see, A, when I watched the audience, it was such a mixed audience of mm-hmm. all of the different races and different age groups, which was something extremely rare to see at that mm-hmm. time period. And then I saw how there was a lady, she did a Q&A for after after every show or before every show and um one lady was just like i have to go to the bathroom i didn't get to go to the bathroom and i just know 90 percent of comedians even me i would have probably been like oh pee yourself or right something. that would have been the joke you would have gone it for been it. the right. joke instead she goes oh you have to go to the bathroom come on up and go it's, it's right around and she minds all this humor mm-hmm. out of the fact that she's helping this lady get to the bathroom right and showing her around the right. corner and, and around and don't look, watch out for the lights right. and, the, the, and it's it's so funny right it's hilarious and it's rare and it's all came from being kind her kindness her inherent kindness there's something i just actually speaking of our interview i interviewed her i um, on the carpet at the golden globes and um she always writes back children who send her fan mail 
She's always done it. And those kids are now, you know, 50, but she's always done it. And she says she does it because she sees them. And I think that kindness is literally seeing someone and seeing that life is hard for them too, because that's the beauty, that's, that's the reality of, of life. Life is hard for everyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. I don't, it's, it's hard in some way for everyone. And kindness is seen through your own struggles and seeing theirs and going today, I will not add to whatever it is you're going through. I'm going to choose to be um, a soft place for you to land in this moment. If today it's that you have to pee, I'm going to be the one that navigates you to where you can safely relieve yourself. <laughs> and I will do it with comedy. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, I just want to say, um, I've been a big fan of yours for a long oh, time. Me too. And just enjoy y your work as an actor. And when I met you, it was just such a, um, I guess a relief, but also just a beautiful sight to see that you were just as warm and sweet Aww. and nice as you were on screen. And that's why you are, that's why you glow on screen because of who you are in, in real life. Thanks, and, Ryan. Um, and I knew then that every time I see you somewhere or I'm with working on the same project as you or I'm in, or we're just passing each other through in different interviews, it lets me know that I'm on the right path. Oh, buddy. Because it makes me feel that I'm I'm in the circle of people that I want to be around. It's very sweet. And people say the same about you, and I feel the same about you, and you're one of the good ones. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you for taking the time to be Thank here. you for having me in your lovely home. <laughs> thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.